Please remember to approach them at reasonable speed. Reducing speed enables the tires to maintain maximum traction. Make sure you check your mirrors for any blind spots and make the proper adjustments if any are found. If you start to lose control of your vehicle in a curve, let up on the accelerator. Avoid heavy braking and as the vehicle slows down, gradually steer in the direction you want to go in. As you drive through the curve, wait until you are completely out of it before accelerating again. When using the brakes, avoid heavy braking. Instead, apply force with smooth and even pressure. This permits the wheel to continue rolling and maintain proper traction while the vehicle is slowing down. If the wheels do lock, release the brake pedal and repeat the steady increase in pressure technique. Because stopping distances vary with different weight loads and driving conditions, you should take full advantage of drivetrain braking when slowing down. Use lower gear to manually downshift, especially on steep grades. Not only is this a safe way to slow the vehicle down, but it also helps to extend the life of the brake linings. When driving on secondary road surfaces like rough asphalt, earth, or hard packed gravel, vehicle operation is essentially the same as it is for normal high traction surfaces. However, you must be prepared to slow down and adjust your driving technique for such changing conditions as encountering loose gravel. When faced with cross country or off road operations, special care and attention must be given to the unpredictable and unusual circumstances requiring good driving reflex and skill. It is in this kind of terrain that the Humvee operator must be most alert and exercise great caution. If you are driving a vehicle equipped with a four-speed transmission, do not use the overdrive position when operating in off-road terrain, as this could seriously damage the transmission. One of the key ingredients to controlled, safe vehicle operation in off-road terrain conditions is the use of good driving sense. Here are a few helpful rules to follow when driving over rough terrain. Avoid sharp turns and abrupt maneuvers when negotiating rough terrain. Vehicle speed should be consistent with the weather and terrain conditions. If possible, avoid dangerous obstacles like stumps and boulders. When encountering a side slope, good judgment needs to be exercised in determining how to make your approach. Planning ahead helps to avoid having to stop in a dangerous situation as on a hillside. If you do have to stop on a hillside, make sure you exit the vehicle on the uphill or high side to avoid placing yourself and crew in a vulnerable and potentially dangerous situation. If you are unsure, the rule of thumb is drive around the slope. If that is not possible and your tactical situation permits, walk over it first to get a better feel for the terrain. It is better to be sure. Navigating a side slope that is too steep could make the vehicle roll over, damaging equipment, and even causing serious injury or death to the vehicle occupants. Depending on the specific model you're operating and the terrain conditions, the Humvee is designed to traverse a side slope up to a maximum of 40% or about 22 degrees in the basic, A1, and A2 series, and up to 30% or about 17 degrees in the ECVs. If you begin to experience wheel hop, you have exceeded the incline maximum limits. Keep in mind, these are maximum limits. If you approach these limits on other than clean, dry, solid surfaces, you compromise the safety of the vehicle and could endanger the occupants. If you're driving on a side slope in loose sand, gravel, or mud, use the serpentine method of steering the vehicle by weaving slightly back and forth. This will help to correct the vehicle's tendency of having the rear end drift down the slope. If that happens, steer into the direction of the slide to regain control. The Humvee is also capable of negotiating some fairly steep slopes, both up and down. 
it can navigate a slope grade up to a maximum of 60 percent or 31 degrees. Another important point to remember is that if you're not sure of the grade severity, loose or slippery surfaces will reduce the vehicle's ability to negotiate the grade. When coming to the top of a hill, be sure to slow down and prepare to stop if necessary. There may be a steep drop or other potentially dangerous conditions ahead. Don't drive blind, use good driving sense, and avoid serious problems before they happen. When going uphill, adjust the vehicle's speed and select the proper transmission and transfer case ranges before starting. You may have to use the low gear range, first or second gear, to obtain the best driveline torque. Be sure to accelerate smoothly and not too fast, or the vehicle could lose its traction. Maintain your speed level as you continue up the incline. Drive straight up or straight down a hill whenever possible, and avoid having to turn or maneuver during the climb. This is especially critical when negotiating a steep hill, where the potential for losing traction, sliding sideways, or possibly even rolling over is greatest. This could cause damage to the equipment and even serious injury or death. Use the drivetrain to brake when slowing the vehicle down or when going downhill. In this situation, gear down according to your speed and use the engine compression and the low ranges of the transmission and transfer case to help control the speed. If you're in deep sand, don't use the brakes. It is best to keep the wheels moving to a point where you can safely control the vehicle. If you encounter a large dip or ditch in the terrain, enter at about a 15 degree angle, making sure that three wheels maintain contact with the ground at all times. When encountering large dips, ditches, or small washes, coast into the obstacle using the engine as a brake. Then use the low ranges of the transmission and transfer case to power out. If approaching a ridge, remember to slow down, as it is possible for the vehicle to get airborne crossing the ridge, resulting in a loss of control and possible injury to the occupants. In order to maximize traction when going over the ridge, select a path that provides the same surface conditions for both wheels of the same axle. As with crossing a ditch, use an angular approach to be sure that three of the vehicle's wheels remain on solid footing. The Humvee is also capable of crossing logs and other obstacles, such as rocks and mounds, up to 16 inches in height. The proper way to cross the log is to approach it at about a 15 degree angle. You should then walk the vehicle over the log, one tire at a time. As the tire makes contact with the log, slowly and carefully accelerate up the log, and use the service brakes to ease each tire down. Those are some typical encounters you're very likely to face on operational missions involving the Humvee. Now, let's review some of the more unusual and adverse conditions you could be confronted with during operation. One of those is water fording. All Humvees can ford up to 30 inches without the need for any auxiliary equipment. Marine Corps Humvees are attached with deep water fording kits that enable them to ford up to 60 inches of water these kits are not available on the M1114 ECV. You should never attempt shallow water fording unless the water depth is known to be 30 inches or less with a bottom surface that is hard and stable. The vehicle should not exceed five miles per hour while fording. If you enter the water too fast, it will splash up over the hood and into the air intake, causing the engine to stop abruptly. Under this condition, attempting to start the vehicle could damage the engine. When fording, the proper way to enter the water is at a slow and steady even vehicle speed. Exit the water in an area that has a gentle slope if possible. To dry out the brakes, drive at low speed while slowly applying pressure on the brake pedal until uneven braking ceases. Sand terrain presents